Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, and we have got a very, very special show for you right now. We got two of the best in the business riding shotgun along, and we're going to be talking about some trophy predictions for the NHL for the 2020-2021 season. And on this show, we're going to talk about the Jack Adams, which is the best coach of the year, and the Vesna, which is the best goalie of the year. I am flanked by the best, the professor. What's up, Joe? How you doing, buddy? Doing well, doing well. It's uh, almost playoff hockey season where even Charles Barkley likes it more than playoff basketball, and he's supposed to watch playoff basketball. So it's definitely a very good uh, playoff for sure. (laughs) Yeah, man, that is awesome sauce. Also flanked to the other side is the great, the awesome, the man, the Perlo Wisdom. How you doing, Perlo? Excellent, buddy. Just uh, loving it. So doing hockey all day, all, yeah, all the man. time. By the way, I love Barkley. By the way, I just love him. Nobody okay. can just. I love guys that can just say whatever they want and don't matter. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. I like it. <laughs> uh, when he came out, when he came out that year and said that he was all down with playoff hockey, man, that uh, that just exploded with people. Uh, it was huge lot, for the. It was huge for the. That's what I game. mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I mean. That was awesome. So. All right, now that we've got all of the folks that we're going to be talking to, we're going to talk about some things that are very, very special this year. And the first thing we're going to talk about is the Jack Adams Award, which is the best coach of the year. And we have a a select group of of coaches that we all think uh, will be um, in this race or in the running or who we think could potentially be uh, these particular coaches. And uh, I want to say this. We're just making predictions Uh, We don't really know who's going to win. This is just who we think is going to win. We'll probably come back around and see and compare how we predicted to how everything came out. So let's start off with who do we think is going to be the, the, let's say, let's start off with who we think is going to be on the list. I believe they put three coaches on the list to vote for, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, Joe, give me a coach you think is going to be on the list. Um, I do think it's. I think it'll be between these two. So I'll let Pirlo take Quinville. I'll take Dean Evison for the third place. Um, I think Quinville might get unfortunately hurt by the fact Zito had one of the best off seasons. So his team was a lot more filled where Minnesota had a lot more patchwork, including with Cam Talbot, to make him his best he's been in a while. Mm-hmm. Have Kockenham play the right amount of games. Have Kirill come into the right exact line. Have Erickson Eck play his best season. Yeah, so they yeah. kind of had more stuff fall into place where you had more veterans you point to in the Huberdos of the world. You, you brought in Hornquist, who was a perfect signing. So I feel like they have a better chance when we get to executive, maybe, where – Everson might be a little bit more in third place for coach of the year, but if it's whatever one of those two's there, fully deserve it. But Everson, I'm going to go with just because he made his young goalie well. He had Calvin have his best year. Erickson, Eck, who people have been waiting to break out yeah, more, yeah. did. And then Kirill Kaprizov should be when we get to the rookie of the year. I'm sure we'll talk about him a lot. So yeah, yeah, I agree with that 100. percent I, 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 that he was, he wasn't somebody that I initially had on the radar. But you know, now that you mention all those kinds of things, man, I can definitely see why you would put the goalie or the uh, coach of uh, uh, the Minnesota Wild as as one of the coaches of the year. So he, they really have turned that team around up there for sure. So all right, Perlo, who who do you think is going to be on the list? Um, I, 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 it's not necessarily who's going to be on the list because uh, I think like for the third guy, he's probably the most interesting. Yeah. Right? Like we both kind of agree that it could be Q and E here. Yeah. Uh, Q and Evison, uh, it could be the, but the third guy really to me is a very interesting one. And, and there's a couple in here that I think may be on there that might surprise people. Yeah. And I think you got to go with, I, I think one guy you got to really look at because the team was in so much turmoil early and turned it around so well. The the the, the voting membership loved those kind of oh, yeah. stories. Oh yeah. And uh, and Hines in Nashville did. Uh, I mean, this team was going nowhere, and every, people were calling for his head pretty much. Yeah, yeah. And then all, 
all of a sudden he gets injuries to his big guys like Duchesne and 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 uh, uh, Josie and everything, and then they start doing well. I mean, <laughs> if, if that's not you know, you could really point the finger to coaching there yeah. a bit, right? To rally the guys, to get these guys up and going, and uh, the new guys coming in and putting a new focus on the team and all of that all at one time, especially when your neck was on the block and turning around and just going this huge winning streak. Now, people will, can maybe say that sorrow started coming into his own and that has more to do with it than... Uh, him as a right. coach but you know what i've said before show me right. a great goaltender and i'll show you a great coach and that's uh, looks why, like that's, he, that's why we're mixing these two trophies and vice, together and vice versa yeah right. so right, right, right. um so that's just a guy that i think you might might see in there in the third spot and most people are missing it okay. because they love they love those kind of stories, you know, but um, I yeah. really have to agree with what you're saying on that, too, because you guys make really great points for teams that were not in it at the beginning of the year. Right. Nashville were going to be big sellers right mm -hmm. by the trade deadline. Yeah. You know, and that completely just went away. Mm -hmm. Okay, to the point where they were like, nope, we're keeping our guys because we're making a playoff push. Minnesota yeah. has has done exactly what I mean, Professor pointed out. They they got the players they needed and they were able to to advance to a point where they're in the playoffs. And and most not, people forget they still have Marco Rossi who was injured all season. And that's what <laughs> so, I mean. And, and they're yeah. not just in the playoffs, they're third place. Yeah. You know what I mean? Handled. That's what I mean. That that's what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna go with uh, a coach that nobody else that I have heard talk about at all as being coach of the year. And, and it's kind of surprising to be honest with you. And I know there's a lot of talk that's been swirling around this coach in the last couple of weeks, but I'm going to go with Rod Brindamore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He was in there too. Yeah. I, seeing what he has done in Carolina and I'm not talking about his whole body of work because we have to talk about just this year. OK, and Carolina was pretty much looking at, you know, some pretty shaky looking goaltending coming into the year. And they weren't really sure about how this roster was going to play well and all this other stuff. And I mean, they had played well the year before, you know what I mean? But some things have happened and, you know, some things changed. Wilson retired and, you know, they, they had some moves and stuff that they had to make. And so Carolina, I felt was, you know, we didn't I don't I think we both I think we all had them picked to go to make it to the playoffs, but, you know, we weren't really high on them. You know what I'm saying? And and so I think, at least I wasn't. But now that this whole year has progressed, they're on the verge of the President's Trophy, uh, and, and the way he has that team playing this year has been amazing. I mean, uh -huh. they have still only lost 10 regular regulation losses in the whole season. 10, that's it. Yeah, and what I said for Everson about him making uh, Talbot his best self, uh, Brindy this year has made Reimer his yeah. best self. Uh, yeah. This has been the, by far the best year uh, that and Reimer's Del played. And then and Nelkovich, but yeah, Nelkovich has been yeah. a beast as yeah. a youngster, but he's also done the pivotal thing. Now, you said it, the, you highlighted it perfectly. Colorado, or not Colorado, Chicago didn't have an option, but they did where he mixed in the Delkovich really well and put Reimer in also to not tax his youngsters. So it just like Minnesota with Everson, he did do his justice with putting the veteran in when he should be in and putting the young kid in when he should be in. So, yeah, yeah that's definitely, he's a guy I was going to mention too. He would actually be my favorite to win it just because I don't think people projected Carolina to win the president's and overtake Tampa, who just won. So yeah. I feel like that's why he would be my favorite to win it, because he kind of just really overtook and took the uh, bounds of what people thought was reality for this team. Okay, okay. Um, there's another There's another couple more coaches out there that we could talk about that potentially could be in the running for this for this trophy. Okay, and I'm going to – we we mentioned him earlier. J Joe, you mentioned him, uh, and, and that would be Quinville in Florida. Okay, yeah. and, and we have all marveled at what has happened in Florida this year. 
because none of us picked Florida to even be remotely sniffing where they are right now. Because we were like, well, if Bob plays up to 80% of his Vesna self, then maybe Florida has a chance. But we had no clue about Drager. We had no clue about the defense that this team was going to put together. We had no clue about potentially this offense that they have put together and the way this team has come together. Uh, and, and where Quinville has this team right now in the standings, I, I, would, have to, I would have to agree and, and add Quinville to this list. Well, add, I, I would go further than add. Uh, me, I, <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, look at it. Like, everything he's touched this year has turned to gold as far as players are concerned. Then one of the biggest things for uh, a sign of a great coach is that the players that they have become better in this, in his, under his uh, uh, leadership. And, you know, Carter Verhege, uh, Anthony Duclair, um, uh, they, they bring over Owen Tippett has been building for a while in Florida and hasn't really got there, but he's sort of getting there this year. You're starting to see the what Owen Tippett can be. He was a first round pick and he's playing fantastic. Frank Fratrano, like everybody's having career years here in yeah, Florida. Yeah. So, um, it's does that just a fluke? You know, you really gotta you, you have to point to the co coaching when those sort of things, Mackenzie Weger as far as I'm concerned, should be in the Norris talk this year. He's so good. If you look at his fancy stats, they're incredible. And then, of course, we talk about the goaltending. Sergey Bobrovsky hasn't had a great, great year, but he's certainly come a long way from last year. And then you mentioned Drigger as well. So all of these guys having career years. And then you get a guy who was uh, struggling in Calgary for the last two, three years, asked for a trade, finally gets traded, Sam Bennett, they pick up, and he's now getting a point a game ever since he gets into the presence <laughs> of Q as well. So, yeah. yeah, I would have to say that Quinville's got to be in the conversation. For yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. And, we, and, and like you said, we didn't. Um, I think, like I said, we, we got a uh, Projo was talking Florida though before yeah, the season. Projo was the only one. Right. That was really talking him up like a lot. Yeah. Yes. The rest of us were like, eh. We although, really... although once he started talking about it, I started agreeing with him. He was on it first. For sure. I, I agree. I agree 100%. It definitely wasn't for the reasons that came to fruition. I thought Bob would step up. <laughs> the silent savior that no one heard of until this season for the most part. Right. But, but, but it definitely did work out still. In the end, but I think we named a bunch of uh, great people where mine, my top three, I already said two of them, would be Everson with Brindy, where it's so hard to pick, so, so many guys deserve it. Who else should be in there where I think I got to take a piece of my soul and give credit to someone that deserves to get credit here? So, yeah. um, Pittsburgh is not the best put together team. Very true. Uh, Mike Sullivan has got them in first place. Uh, they are not even close to being the best constructed team in this division. No. So I think that takes some onus, especially particularly when Tristan Yari was absolute garbage in the first about <laughs> month and a half of the of the season. And yes, I say it fancy when the person really stinks in the first month. <laughs> month and, a half. And, and, th and then he started getting going where I think a big thing for him is sh like Pilo said, show me a good coach. And, and he'll bring the goaltender along. Look at Casey DeSmith this year. Yeah. They would not be anywhere where they're at if Casey DeSmith did not plug in and fill that hole while Yori took a while to actually get his bearings. So I think that shows the markings of a great coach. He's been actually getting more offense out of the Kapanen's really played well in Pittsburgh that's come over there. So all the guys you brought in have mixed in well as well. So I think – that's why I think he has to be mentioned as the third guy because he's played extremely well. They're finishing out the season tremendously, too, and I know they like having a big finish for who could win the coach, especially someone that's rallying to move up the standings in the end of first place. They're 8-2 and two in their last 10 and rally to move now past Washington 75 points to 73 as we currently stand. So if he finishes first due to a late rally, I feel like that would help Mike Sullivan also. Yeah, yeah. Uh I couldn't disagree with you on that. I mean, uh, to be honest with you, uh, as far as where where I had Florida selected, they were 
One, two, three, four, five, fifth place in the Central where I had Florida selected. Yeah, most of us didn't have Pittsburgh in the postseason. We we didn't. Now, uh, yeah, I had Pittsburgh. <laughs> I had yeah. Pittsburgh finishing uh, uh, seventh or no, uh, fifth oh. behind the Rangers even. Right. Oh. Okay. So yeah, I'm with you on that. Oh. Uh, I have to agree with you 100 percent on that. If and, he if if he got the if he got the coach of the year this year, I couldn't argue it. Yeah, I couldn't either. I mean, being yeah, I'd have to agree. I couldn't argue that at all either. Yeah, I think the problem he should have already had one. The problem he's always going to have is he has one of the greatest leaders of all time on his team, right? With uh, and you know with Crosby, and uh, that you have Latang too. So that yeah, right. And and you know what? Since they brought Jeff Carter over, I mean, he scored what ten goals. Yeah, he, he got the golden sombrero. He got the good golden sombrero yesterday in hockey. The golden sombrero is good. That's four goals in baseball. That means you suck and suck out for it. Right. Okay. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, so I guess who who are we picking? Um, who are, who are you picking out of all of those now? I pick Rod. I You're pick going on Brindy. You think Brindy's going to win it? President's Trophy, that's not expected from Carolina. They overtook Tampa and overtook Florida, who became the biggest surprise team, where it seems like they're in the driver's seat unless if something fails late here, they should get that President's Trophy. Wow. There you go, man. That's that's quite honestly who I think it's going to be, too. I mean, I really do. Um, just based off of what he has done with this team. and 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 if you want to look at what he's done with this team since he's been coach. Okay, cool. Yeah. You know, but we're only looking at just this year. I, I think when they do to pick coaches, though, it does have more to do with than just the one year. It's their body of work, too. Yeah, but it's supposed this to be. has been good. Though. That's what I mean. <laughs> I know what it's supposed to be and what it is are two different things in no, hockey. I agree. Yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah, one yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 I agree. Because he, he has a. a Point six nine five winning percentage yeah. since he's, he's been gonna, coach. Okay. He's going to win. That's he's pretty win darn one good, event. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, he's going to win one. He's going to win one eventually, and for a smaller market team. Because I think with him too, everyone progressed. You love Morty Nikas. Morty Nikas continued to take a next yeah. step this year. Should be in when we mentioned the Selkie. Yeah. Might be in that conversation as a winger. Uh, then Trocheck did really good. Need a rider. Um, uh, did, oh man, good, awful. Good oh, yeah, Aho, and yes. then, yeah, well, well, Sebastian Aho is ridiculous. And then Svechnikov, that line is one of the best lines I um, in the league with those two guys. And then Fogel, and then um, Fast stepped up. So I feel like this it makes sense for him to get first because, like we talked about, guys like Everson and Q, all the other guys that are supposed to be your chipping guys have really took it to the next level to be exactly that, where in New York, Jesper Fast was more of a meh dude, where now he's actually become a decent chipping piece for yeah. Carolina, and Warren Fogles continued to become a very good bottom six player. So I think everything's kind of coming to fruition. I know while watching them yesterday, their announcer even said – all these guys we have with how confident that he has them playing, I'm confident with anyone being in in the postseason, whether it's a Lorenz or McCormick or something, he said they have them playing the right way. Whoever's in, uh, their announcer said that he's confident with. So I think that speaks huge volumes towards the head coach. Yeah, I can't even disagree with you on that at all, man, for real, um, to be honest with you. So, all right. So we all agree that we agree on the – the, the coaches that are going to be on the list. And I think we've all agreed on who's going to probably win, right? We're all rooting no, for Rob. I, 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 who are, no, I don't, I don't agree. Actually. No, you don't? Okay, who are you no. picking, Perlo? I, I love Brindamore, and I certainly wouldn't argue if he won. Like, these are, we're splitting hairs here. We're talking about some unbelievable coaching. Right, that, okay. It's been going on here, right? And I agree with you. He, uh, Brindamore has done an amazing job with this team. It's, it's probably one of the best well-oiled machines technically speaking i don't think there's a better team out there right now the way this like the uh, like the islanders kind of had that trophy last year yeah. carolina has it this year yeah, I think. Uh, so so for that alone that's all coaching x's and o's getting guys to do what they're supposed to do roles all that stuff like that yep. so if they got it i'm totally with that no doubt about it honestly if you're looking at who i think should win it it's, I think, even who I win it and who I think is going to win it, 
are probably the same, but it's really close. And I'm going to go with Q. Okay. And the re the reason why is he took a roster that doesn't have the advantages of Carolina's roster and turned it into a team that is almost as good as what Carolina is throwing out there right now. So I'm giving it to him this time. Um, now, I know that the award itself, the award people know that Brendan Moore's got to get one, okay, at least True. one in his career. So this might be the year they go with it because – if they don't give it to him this year, there's going to be too many excuses not to give it to him after this because Svechnikov's going to be scoring 40, 50 goals a year. Right. Aho's, Aho's going to be getting the Selkie. Uh, you know, all of the – Nino Niederreiter. Look, there's a good example of a guy yeah. that is great coaching. He was in the Islander. He was on the Islanders. He was on Minnesota, basically thrown away, and he's turned him into a very consistent player. But yeah. I'm, I, I think Hughes is the one that's going to get it this year. And uh, like I said, if has Brenda Q Moore gets it, won it, yeah, he has. Okay, so if Q's already won it, then that's why I, I, I you, know, you see where I'm going with that, right? Because yeah. of exactly what you said. Okay, yeah. and especially if Rod Brindamore's team gets the president's trophy, I really think that's going to cement him as a Jack Adams. Yeah, we'll I, see. I, 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 I'm I'm happy if you're. Right. Oh yeah, either either one. Even if Sutter wins, I can't argue with that either, Joe. You know no. that you picked him either, because I can't argue with that either, because of what we all. You mean Dean about. Everson? You mean? No, no, no. The um uh from Pittsburgh. Uh, oh, Sullivan. 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 Yeah. Sorry, Sullivan. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I wouldn't yeah. even even argue with that either, because no. of what he's done there in Pittsburgh and where yes, they Cody. are right now. He has Cody, CC, and Matheson in, on his top. <laughs> the, those are the two. You're right, two, exactly. <laughs> those are the two worst and regular, de regular <laughs> defensemen on the league last year, and he's turned them into. Yeah, I know. I mean, CC's I can, now a desired target. They might not even be able to keep him because of how good Mike Sullivan's turn to CC stats. That if you look at projectile for free agency, most teams are trying that are at, trying to add a right-handed defenseman. One of their targets is Cody CC. Yeah, <laughs> that would not have been the case last year. Yeah, before. exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I certainly wouldn't argue okay. with that. Okay. So so you're going with Quinville and Joe, you're going with Brindamore, and that's who I'm going with too is Brindamore. I put right. second is Everson because of the same yeah. reasons as what he just said about Quinville pulling a roster that wasn't expected to be mm -hmm. as good exactly. and making it the best it could be. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Well, we'll see how it goes, but I, I'm, I, 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 yeah. It's going to be interesting because man, there's still a couple games left. Yeah. You know. And I think if what Pirlo said, if you won it already, sometimes that screws you. Where Everson's never won and Brentford's never won. So I think that yeah. might also. I'm we'll with you on split. that. I'm with you on that. All right. So now that we've talked about the best coaches, let's talk about the Vesna Trophy, which is awarded to the best goalie. Okay. Mm -hmm. And... Of course, we had to have Pro Joe in on this because yeah. he is our resident professor on pretty much everything. But but he he laser focuses on goalies. He has an affinity for goalies. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> we had to bring the professor in to talk about some goalies, and we've got quite a plethora of goalies that we could talk about that could win the Vesna Trophy this year. And so uh, I'm just gonna throw the first name out there and we'll just start rolling with it. Mm -hmm. And I, I really, I, I'm torn between the, the, this one and another goalie, but I have, I have to go with Vasilevsky as my front runner on this okay. Okay. Um, 12 game winning streak, mm -hmm. multiple shutouts um, has played amazing. Okay, mm -hmm. he's played forty games and has won thirty-one. What? Yeah. Whoa. Okay. So that's my number one name right there. So we'll go with Perlo on this one, since since I know Joe's going to have way more information for the rest of us. So we'll go with Perlo on this one. Throw a name out there we think's going to be in the Vesna race. Okay. Um, I think you got to. I think you got to look at Varlamov. Um, his numbers are pretty fantastic, and the Islanders haven't been the Islanders this year. 
Uh, I would never have guessed that to begin with. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, Barlam, I'm with you. Barlam, remember we're talking about great coaches and stuff like that. Barlamov yeah. struggled in Colorado quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, was actually on the down part of side of his career. And then now comes over to the island. Last year he had good numbers as well, but the team was playing, like we just said, technically fantastic. And this year they had some changes and all of that. Uh, he's played 35 games, and I believe he's got a, not, a point, 2.02 and a point nine three zero. That is... That's pretty good. I, that's eye poppy numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I said, he this year I, I I listen to a lot of games for the Islanders and the you know commentators are generally very well schooled at the game as well, uh, especially the ones that work for the local com local the local commentators. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they have said that this year, if it wasn't for Varlamov, they don't think the Islanders would have made the playoffs. So the island Varlamov saved them. A lot of games this year, so um, I really think you got to take a look at him. Uh, and uh, I don't know how much play he's going to get, but I, those are two, those are pretty impressive numbers. When's the last time we've seen a two point zero two? Like that's a lot. I think it's a long time. Well, I, I mean, Vasilevsky, what does he have this year? 2.10. Grew Bowers the second one. It's a two two point one zero. Yeah, so 2.02, Matt. That is incredible numbers for and, and now. So yeah, uh, and Ruby yeah. at 2.03. Yeah, yeah, you uh, already said him. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna leave the Flurry or Groove Hour to them, but those are the four guys, though. Yeah. Or, so or, who would you say, Joe, out of the Groove Hour and Flurry? Um. Well, or do you think have... do you think they both beat Obarlama? You think they both beat up Barlow? The, the the big thing here is Vasilevsky's having a great season. It's going to come down to, I feel like, since of how good of a season he's having, it's going to come down to her win, and it'll be just because of the tenure of games, which is not really fair to do. Um, probably Grubauer and Flurry, because I feel like sometimes the award voters don't look at the whole landscape enough, and I doubt they're taken into account as much as they should. Sorokin stuck for the first month and a couple weeks of the season and then got going. I don't think people just in my opinion, think about that as much as they should. So that's why I think just going off of the numbers and games played Varley should be in the top three, but I have a feeling you're more likely to see Vasilevsky Grubauer and Flurry named than just because of the game total, because otherwise some Toronto fans might also come in and say, well, Jack Campbell played 20 games and was one of them, which they could potentially make that yeah, sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. season. So um, it's going to get interesting what they do there. But in terms of Grubauer to Flurry, I would have to lean Flurry just because of what we said about coaching. They know Brindamore has to get a Jack Adams by the end of his career. This is the last time Mark andre Flurry is going to be able to most likely be named for the Vezina, unless if he goes to Seattle or doesn't stay in Vegas and destroys over there. But other than that, this is probably the last time he'll be able to be in this race, be on a team that sets him up well for it. But he also has a historic season at this age. So I think it's going to be between just because of how good Vasilevsky's doing. I mean, when you go on that streak that Steele said you won a majority of your games, you played 40 games and won 31. I mean, that's a pretty ridiculous uh, feat. I think it's going to go between those two because – you have a flurry one third 24 playing 34 so that's still really good and has a 926 and a 207 yeah i feel like if i'm voting because he never won one and he's really the reason vegas group or laner stepped up in the back end but only played like 17 18 games he's really the reason vegas has got to where it is where you thought it would be reversed I would go him, and then just because Vazzy's won one, this is the only reason. Then Vazzy would probably be second um, for me, just because I know he's going to be back. He's the best goaltender in the league, hands down. He's the best goalie in the world right now. So okay. I know as a voter, he's going to be back. Okay. Flurry's not going to be back, most likely. So if Correct. I want to get him a better note before he retires, help his Hall of Fame ballot, which should be guaranteed already anyway, but help it out, then that's something I think I would take to do because he deserved it this year. 
And he's doing it at that age, too. So I think that's why I put him first. Vazzy would be second. And then it's a toss-up. You can put, if you want to put Vorlamov because of the Islanders not performing with Sorokin and him really stepping it up, you can put him third, or you could put Grubauer third because it's the same reason as Tampa. They had no backup. You had uh, Hunter Miska, and then you brought in Johansson from uh, Buffalo before you brought in Dubnik. So both of these guys have had to play a magnitude of games and have done so really well. So I would say Flurry will win it because he has to get one, in my opinion, before he retires. He's one of those goalies you look at and go, wow, he never won a Vezina. So I think yeah. that's why he might get it. Then Vazzy would be second, and then you got Grubauer. But I wouldn't be surprised if voters put Grubauer second just because he never won one in. Okay. Like Pirlo said earlier, we do see that guys going, this guy won one, we'll know he'll be back. Let's try to give this guy the nod because we're not sure if he'll be back. Right. And we pretty much, we all agree that Fleury is not going to be back. And you know, when you look at his numbers for the season so far, I mean, he is in the top list of goalies with that 2.07. You know what I mean? Goals against. And, and he's stopped... Nine, he stopped 879 shots on eight on 949. So he has actually one of the lower goals against in the top four. Yeah. Okay. Uh, with with Grubauer being next, with only four more goals allowed. Okay. So he's got 74, and Flurry's got 70. Okay. And Flurry has got uh, three less games played, so no big deal. And then their shutouts are pretty much even, even for all these guys, both too, because five, 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 and then six, six for Grubauer. Yeah. Right. So no. I would either have to put Grubauer in there. Um, I, I like Vasilevsky, but, you know, now that you mentioned some of these things, too, and, and when you look at the way the league is and how things are rolling with the trophies and stuff like that, I would have to agree. I would put Marc-Andre Fleury as the number one to give him that trophy, to send him off as on top because he probably won't be back next year. Or Vegas. Well, he'll probably be back in the NHL. I'm not sure about Vegas. Yeah. Okay, all right. But, and yeah. he's probably not going to be playing at that same level again anytime soon because if he's going to leave Vegas, he's probably not going to be on a team that's – I mean, we don't know, but his chances of being at this – Yeah, like if he's on Seattle, unless if they pull a Vegas Golden Knights, you're probably not going to see right. these type of numbers from Flurry. Right. I – I'm gonna take a look. I'm gonna take a, a shot. Um, not a hot take, I guess you'd say. Uh oh, here it comes. Knowing what Vegas has done up until now, I would not be surprised if they trade Laner and keep Flurry. I wouldn't, except for the fact of. They haven't gone back on their word yet in the few year history of the organization, and they basically told Rob Lehner, no matter what, we're gonna put you forth as the future guy, no matter what happens in the end of. Oh, Clark did they? Time. I yeah. didn't know that. Okay, so, well, that's probably not the case. <clears throat> they're they're probably kicking themselves. They said that now. Well, uh, but yeah, I now that he mentions it, I probably have to agree that this. This was one of those years where you give it to the guy that should have had one a long time ago. The only reason why Fleury didn't get one before this is because his team was too good. Yeah, the leadership quality. You said with Crosby, they had Latang on that team. They had all these guys that just led the gauntlet. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Well, there you have it, folks. I think we put... Oh, but there's one thing I want to say for yeah. Pierre, because he brought up Varlamov. Varlamov should easily, at least if he, because I know you obviously only named three, but then you see who comes in the voting when you look at hockey reference. He should at least be votes-wise in the top five. That would be, I think, a bad thing by the league if you look at hockey reference. He's somehow like 15th or something. Okay, I only thought they picked four. I'm sorry. They, no, they oh. do, but I'm saying when you go on, it'll tell you like some like you know how when you go in hockey, oh, it'll give you the breakdown of like the top plays, ten or whatever. Yeah, okay, like gotcha. you got like the placing. He should be should, top. Three yeah. as far as I'm he concerned. should be. Yeah, he should probably be top three, but he should definitely be when the voting shakes down in the top five because we talked about shutouts. He shut down other teams the most and also didn't play as, as much Man, games yep. as a Vasilevsky did to get to those five shutouts. He played 40. Barley only played 35 and has seven. So that's a big thing when he's yeah. really just been able to shut down his opponents also. Yeah, I'm with yeah. you, though. I'm with you, though. I, I, like, I like the points of view, though. 
You know what I mean? Because everybody has a different opinion. Everybody has a different point of view. And we all kind of see the game a little slightly differently. You know, we, we, we all look at things a little differently. We all notice things differently and things like that. But what, when it comes down to things, we basically have all agreed. We think that either Quinville or, or Rod Brindamore is going to win the Jack Adams. Right. Mm. Either one of those two. And it doesn't really matter who is going to win that trophy. We all pretty much agree. Whoever's going to win it deserves it. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Right. OK. And the same thing with the Vesna trophy. We're, we're all we're either going with Flurry or uh, uh, Perlo. Are you still going to say? No, no. I think Vasilevsky has to be the other one on there. But uh, okay. I, I think Flurry yeah, will win it as well because it'll be really embarrassing to the league to put a guy into the Hall of Fame that never won a Vesna. OK, well, that makes sense. <laughs> I mean, and he's going to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, because he has the stuff. cups. He has the stats. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's, yeah, he's yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. He's a first ballot, I think. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, we got straight, straight line information from the Professor Joe on the goalie situation, and then we got to talk about the Jack Adams with with Perlo and Professor Joe and all of us. So, Pro Joe, how can we get a hold of you? Where can we find all your great stuff? Yeah, you can, of course, find my links on the uh, SteelFlyers.com website, and then my YouTube is uh, Sports Fanatic News. That You can check me out over there as well as for writing for Flyers Nitty Gritty for our Flyers fans. Thank you for joining the video, and thank you guys for having me on. It was awesome to talk about the awards. Yeah, man. Uh, we're we're going to actually circle back around here at eventually some point so we can get what our predictions were, and we also are going to do a couple more shows because there's some more trophies to be handed out. And we talked about some of them too, the Selkie and – and the Norris and some other trophies that we think are going to be handed out. So we'll talk about those on another episode. Perlo, buddy, how can we get a hold of you? Where can we get find all your great stuff? And how can we see you? Go to www.steelflyers.com. All my stuff is there. Uh, I do videos. I do uh, stuff like that. Um, and in just wait about what two hours, three hours, and you can go on my show. <laughs> That's I have right. a show. From three to five, the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show, uh, we come on there, we do picks together, we have some fun, we talk everything hockey while we're doing it, and uh, it's just hockey, hockey, hockey. All right. It's fun. Awesome sauce. <laughs> Well, thank you all very much for checking us out. Uh, this was a uh, uh, special uh, presentation of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. We're talking about the <coughs> NHL trophy predictions for the 2020 uh, 2021 season. I was joined by Pearl of Wisdom and by Professor Joe. This is Steel Flyers from the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Just remember, folks, stay strong, stay safe, and hang tough. <laughs>